this was a lesson to be learned for RG3. Basically, what ended up happening to him is he threw Mike Shanahan under the bus. And when you do that, coaches tend to stick together. So, what ends up happening, now his offensive line won't block for him. Okay. So, this is all Griffin's fault. It's his fault in the sense of him not understanding who he was messing with. That line just shut down on him and completely, completely just broke down on purpose and let people just come in there and just smack RG3 all around. And he probably still don't get it. He probably still don't get it. You know, you don't, one thing you don't do is you don't throw your coach under the bus. And that's something that he did during his injury. You know, he was being funny and talking slick and hitting that. Shanahan, you know, a lot of things were Shanahan's fault when Shanahan was there. So now, um, he lost the locker room, and and the players stopped respecting him. Um, and I'm gonna tell you, man, I I watched the games. And that offensive line, when he's in there. Man, they let them defenders just come in there and take this dude out. This was a this was a hit, what you call in the mob a hit. Okay, this was this was a clipping. This was taking him out. This was removing him from his position. And now they, you know, they have Kirk Cousins, who I believe is a turnover machine. And he's gonna throw interceptions, but he's got the he's got the support of the locker room. And right now that's more important than anything else. What you're gonna see is first of all, no team wants to even pick RG three up. That shows you how bad it is. He's already been blackballed. And he's injury prone on top of that. So he's got a bad reputation for running his mouth. Okay, he hasn't produced in two years. And he can't stay healthy. That sounds to me like his career is already over. But that's a lesson, you know. That's a lesson. I believe he could go somewhere else and, and really do something. Me, personally, in my heart of hearts, I believe he still got talent. I believe he could go somewhere and probably do something. You know, he could go somewhere and back up at least, you know, for a little while. Um, But I believe there's a few places he could go. And, you, hey, you never know. Look at Houston. They don't really have a quarterback like that. And he's from Texas, or he, you know, he played in Texas. He played at Baylor. Why not? You know, why not? Hey, he could back up Eli in New York. Why not? You know, Eli go down. It'd be good to have, you know, somebody that's had some experience. You never know, man. You never know. Um, Trying to think of some other places for him. Um, But he'll end up being a backup wherever he go. Oakland. Um, Chicago right now. You know? But no one wants him. There's no office. The Redskins have actually spoke to uh, teams and teams aren't, they're not biting, you know. They threw the bait out there, but no one's biting. And that just shows you how far, how far 
This guy has fallen from grace, man. You know, he was rookie of the year. He was the man. But the NFL stands for not for long. And when you run your mouth and you throw your coach under the bus, when you lose the respect of the locker room, when you can't stay healthy, you know, when you put yourself before everyone else and, and, and you, you you say little slick things out of your mouth constantly, this is what happens. Because believe it or not, I mean, I'm going to be honest with you, the NFL has has a has a uh, slave master, um, slave owner type mentality, and I'm not talking about from the ownership box either. I'm talking about you know as as a player, you shut your mouth, you don't have an opinion. You're supposed to quote the company line, and that's it. Now, Daniel Snyder loved RG3, and he, he wanted RG3, RG3 to work, you know? So, you know, it, it didn't come from the actual ownership, but it came from, you know, it's the NFL. The NFL is bigger than Daniel Snyder. The NFL is bigger than, you know, Redskins' ownership. The NFL, you, you have to consider your locker room. And, and when you lose their respect and they don't like you anymore because you're cocky, they'll teach you a lesson. That offensive line against the Detroit Lions, that was a mafia hit. They sat back and let this dude get popped. They knew exactly what they were doing. It was no accident whatsoever. You know, and this guy might actually be too, you know, young and dumb, too stupid to even realize what happened to him. Poor guy. But the Redskins are going to move on. Um, You never know, man. They, they could be a dangerous team. You saw them against the, uh, saw them against the Ravens, you know, getting scrappy and fighting. You know, you never know. They could be dangerous this year. But Kirk Cousins, to me, he throw too many interceptions. I think that's going to be the, you know, the big problem. We'll see. But RG three man, this dude's career might already be over, and that's sad. That's a damn shame. Um, he it's not over because he doesn't have talent. It's over because he's cocky, he's arrogant. Nobody wants to block for. <laughs> it's that simple and no other team wants to take a chance if he could go to another team he could prove himself but it's not happening unfortunately it's not happening it's over um that's it you know not for long that's the NFL you learn your lessons the hard way 